With a surprise announcement, Apple revealed its new M2 Pro and M2 Max chips, which will power the next-gen 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pro and the new Mac Mini. Rumors predicted a launch late last year and the 2022 file name of the video announcement is proof that Apple actually intended to do so. But while we don't know the reasons for the delay, we can figure out what has changed with M2 Pro and Max versus the previous M1 generation in order to unveil possible performance improvements. Without spoiling anything, there are some really interesting and some really odd design choices ready to be discovered. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at Apple's new M2 Pro and M2 Max. The first major difference between the M1 and M2 family is the amount of CPU cores. To be more precise, the amount of efficiency cores. Apple's previous M1 generation has less e-cores on higher-end models. The base M1 comes with 4 efficiency and 4 performance cores. But both the M1 Pro and Max have only 2 efficiency cores in addition to their 8 performance cores. With M2, Apple now provides the same amount of e-cores across all chips. Base M2 is still a 4 plus 4 configuration, but both the M2 Pro and Max combine 4 efficiency with 4 performance cores. And as a result now have 12 CPU cores in total, up from 10 in M1 Pro and Max. Apple claims up to 20% more CPU performance, which is exactly the increase from 10 to 12 cores, but this improvement should be multi-thread only and since the E cores are much less powerful than the P cores, I also expect a slight increase in clock speed. Single thread performance most likely will only increase by a single digit percentage. If we take a look at the silicon die shots Apple provided, performance and efficiency CPU cores are clearly visible. The 8 performance cores including cache marked with dollar signs are colored in red and the 4 efficiency cores also with cache are green. It's immediately apparent how much larger the P-cores are compared to the almost tiny E-core cluster. Apple also beefed up the advanced matrix extension units from 2x4 in the M1 Pro to 2x9 in M2 Pro, which is over twice the amount of AMX units. Before we get to the GPU, which comes with a surprise, a quick look at the neural processing unit, marked in purple. It's literally the same NPU as we've seen on the base M2 model, and Apple claims the same 15.8 trillion operations per second. Nothing new here, but since it's a capable AI engine, it's not really a downside, as it does offer a decent improvement over the 11 trillion ops NPU of the M1 Pro. It's nice to have, but nothing to upgrade over, if anyone would even consider upgrading for an increased NPU performance anyways. The GPU turned out really interesting this time, mainly due to its special design. Leaks from well-known analysts talked about 20 GPU cores in the M2 Pro and 40 GPU cores for the M2 Max, but it turned out to be 19 cores for the Pro and 38 cores for the Max. And I'm not talking about deactivated units to improve yields. The M2 Pro really comes with 19 physical GPU cores, same with the M2 Max and its 38 cores. On the die shot, each individual GPU core is visible. But where one would expect GPU core number 20, we find a clearly different structure. If you are new to die shot analysis, it might not be immediately apparent to you, but it's really only 19 GPU cores. Apple even showed an actual M2 Pro silicon in their announcement video, and luckily the video is high risk enough to confirm my findings. I think it's even more apparent in this image. Expected core number 20 is clearly not a GPU core, but something else. According to Apple, the GPU in M2 Pro is up to 30% faster than M1 Pro, which can't be explained by the increase from 16 to 19 GPU cores alone, since that's only a 18.75% boost in core count. The asymmetrical layout hints at a slight GPU redesign, so each core might be a little bit faster and the missing core number 20 could also be a part of an optimization to improve GPU scaling. On the other hand, 18.75% more cores combined with about 10% higher clock speeds also amount to about 30% more GPU performance. We'll have to wait and see if Apple actually improved the GPU cores architecture and at some point we might even figure out the reason for the odd 19 GPU core design. Once real-world clock speeds of the new M2 chips are revealed, a further analysis is possible. Next are two really important parts of Apple's SoC. The system level cache, which is basically a L3 cache that can be used by CPU and GPU alike, and of course the memory interface, which connects to the unified low power DDR5 memory. I've marked the SLC in orange and the memory interface in a light yellow. It's interesting to see how much die area these two parts actually use up, but since cache and memory bandwidth 
are super crucial to both GPU and CPU performance, it does make a lot of sense that it's a major focus of the design team. M2 Pro supports the same amount of up to 32GB of low power DDR5 memory as M1 Pro. It's hard to tell if the size of the system level cache was increased, I think not, but then I didn't count the memory cells. In any case, if the size changed, it wasn't by a large amount since that would have been immediately apparent. And if you watched my video on SRAM cells, you know that Apple is well advised to keep cache size in check, at least until they switch to a chiplet design. There are lots of other parts hidden in the M2 Pro die shot. I've marked the display engines, Thunderbolt and physical input-output ports. Thanks to everyone on Twitter who helped with the identification. Still unmarked areas are used for media engines, DNN code, the secure enclave and lots of other small function units and ports. So far, we have only looked at the M2 Pro die shot, simply because Pro and Max are very similar in most areas of the chip. The Max version simply doubles the amount of GPU cores, but keeps the same CPU and MPU design. To confirm the odd 19 core GPU design on the M2 Pro, I've also looked at the M2 Max die shot, and it got even stranger. In the previous generation, the larger GPUs on the M1 Max was simply a mirrored and doubled M1 Pro GPU, which makes sense as it's easy to implement from an engineering point of view. But not only does M2 Pro have an asymmetrical 19-core GPU design, M2 Max doesn't use a simple mirrored and double layout. Instead, the two missing GPU cores are in different spots, which means Apple opted to redesign the M2 Max GPU instead of just adding a second M2 Pro cluster. On the M2 Max, the asymmetrical sign is even more apparent. I would love to tell you that I know the reason behind this odd asymmetrical GPU design, but then I'd be lying to you. All I can do is point it out and hope that at some point Apple might enlighten us regarding their engineering decisions. M2 Max also increases the amount of system level cache and memory interface, pretty much proportional to the increase in GPU cores. Next, let's talk about overall performance. In general, CPU performance of M2 Pro and M2 Max, which by the way is exactly the same across both chips, should be decently close to their M1 counterpart, depending on final clock speeds. But while the upgrade from base M1 to base M2 was very subtle, M2 Pro and Max do actually have more physical CPU cores compared to their predecessors. With two more efficiency cores, the performance cores can stay idle for longer, even during more demanding tasks, which will help improve battery life. In my opinion, the added value of the higher tier M2 chips is clearly visible, at least when it comes to the CPU. The GPU has a similar increase in core count, from 16 in the M1 Pro to 19 in the M2 Pro, and from 32 in the M1 Max to 38 in the M2 Max. But this time, Apple changed the GPU design to an asymmetrical layout. While we still don't know the specific reason for this rather odd design decision, it's a noteworthy difference. We will have to wait for independent performance analysis to confirm if the individual GPU cores have more performance because the asymmetrical design solved some form of GPU scaling bottleneck or if it's just a space optimization layout. Overall, it looks like a rather incremental GPU upgrade, but certainly nice to have over the previous M1 models. The rest of the chip hasn't changed that much, especially since the base M2 chip has been available for quite a while now and the M2 chip family is based on the same TSMC 5 Thunderbolt process node used for M1. The NPU gets a performance bump, the encode units are improved and with M2 Pro and Max, the display engine finally supports HDMI 2.1 with high resolution and high refresh rate output. Apple has kept quiet about a potential M2 Ultra so far. I think chances are very high that the next Mac Studio refresh will unveil an M2 Ultra version, especially since the Ultra is just two M2 Max chips with a high-speed die-to-die interconnect, so Apple doesn't have to design a new chip. The M2 Max die shots don't show any interconnect areas, but Apple also did omit that when they first showed the M1 Max, so I think it has been removed from the die shot on purpose. It's also important to consider the size of these chips. M2 Pro comes with a hefty 40 billion transistors and M2 Max ups that to 67 billion all in TSMC's N5P process node. That is close to the transistor count of Nvidia's AD102, the chip powering the RTX 4090. And considering Nvidia is using a cutdown version of the chip for the 4090, the M2 Max should have more active transistors. Now imagine the size and cost of a potential M2 Ultra. The new M2 models are an evolution of M1 and not a revolution. The next actual revolution might come with the switch to TSMC's 3 nanometer node and the corresponding next-gen M3 chips. The A17 Bionic, which is rumored to launch in fall of this year, 
could give us an early glimpse into Apple's true next-gen design. Nonetheless, in my opinion, M2 and especially the Pro and Max models with doubled e-cores are a nice spec increase and the new MacBook Pro models do look appealing from a hardware point of view, as does the reduced anti price for the Mac Mini. Let me know if you think I made any mistakes in my silicon analysis or if you have found and identified more structures on the M2 Pro and Mac style shots. You know what to do if you found this video interesting and see you in the next one.